us what we are doing. This is, you're not going to be in front, but each person, I have identified so far 25 teams. So what we are doing is like, you know, creating uh, different teams because each space we are holding for next 90 days is important. And you are in a very um, sacred space now where you're trying very hard to be clean and to do your part. And you're coming up with a space where your girlfriend is cheating on you. And you're so worried about losing your daughter and your girlfriend using manipulation to call the police and using a time that is sacred for you to sabotage your recovery, right? Like kind of, is that a good fair re yeah. recap? So essentially like, you know, betrayal time, you're going through a betrayal time being stabbed on the back, right? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because instead of working with you, she's like working against you. Yeah. Instead of working as a common force, you <laughs> are getting split in so many directions. This again is coming from the space God wants us to keep us together. I am using the word God. You can use whatever gives you the power time, you know. So God, what is yeah. what is betrayal is actually there is a very nice book called Kitchen Table Wisdom. I hope you can read it because sometimes when I'm very sad, I'll run to the nearest library and pick up all the self-inspiration books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, it's like it, it is so many tools we need in our box, you know. Yeah. So one of the things, like, you know, when I was down, when I was scared, my husband actually, like, you know, we have gone through really bad, bad situations. See, I wouldn't be in recovery had this not happened to me. My husband was, he's now sober for 24 years, but that doesn't mean we didn't have, like, rough times. That's my book, Boring Way to Be Happy with a Dysfunctional Family, that book. Yeah. So one night he called the police and I was pregnant. I was in the streets and the, I was sitting in the cop with the cop in the police station. That girl told me, it kills me to see you like this. I was pregnant. I had two babies already, three and two years old. I have shared this with many, many people. I keep talking about it. It's not that it was painful, but I chose not to play the same way. I decided to change the games of the rules. Because one of the things I decided is I'm not going to be him by reacting. So I'm going to be me. And uh, the police was asking seriously. She said, like, you know, uh, if I were you, I would call another restraining order. I said, no. I said, it stops with me. It stops here. So one of the things I learned through that is I was doing an intense meditation and I am going to bring it up. And this is the symbol, the I Ching symbol that was given to me. Okay, the bliss said, I was in the bliss, watching the bliss and I was praying. The bliss had made this sign, like, like a swirl with the hand. And then when I looked it up, it's called resoluteness. It's I Ching symbol for resoluteness. This means balance justice, which could be severe with fairness. So whatever the situation is, learn what is legally correct and balance this with morally fair. And that became my life. Doesn't matter what it is, when the situation gets tough. Legal correctly. And this is one thing from the legal perspective. Now let's come back to moral perspective. Kitchen table, the wisdom reflects from uh, Rachel e. Raymond. Her, her name is she, Rachel Raymond, and she wrote the book called Kitchen Table Wisdom. It's about her. She, she Jewish. Her grandfather teaches her, like, you know, like all this morality and other stuff, which is kind of like, you know, you, you gather from your elders. Yeah. So they talk, like, essentially in a kitchen table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things I learned from her is, like, you know, sometimes, like, you know, life issues, things that you cannot even imagine, like, you know, being taught, like, in a rational way. So she was doing an education for like a lot of, she's a doctor, by the way, but she is a healer herself. So she teaches to other doctors and stuff. And, and uh, they invited her to Harvard. I don't think, I saw her, I forgot 
when it was, um, I ha I usually gather the classic silk. For some reason, like, you know, they put it in dainty, and that you hold sacred energy. And she was started in fact, because she had this uh, bowel rupture, and she carried the cup, like a cup, colossal bag. I never knew she, they were reversed. So she reminded me of me shattered to pieces, you know, after after all this happens, like you know, inside you feel you're shred apart, you know. But one of the things they say in the temple is whatever is offered, even if it is brag, you hold it sacred. You know, it doesn't matter. So the the rag, even though it was ragged, it still sari. So the edge of the sari still has gold weaved into it. So there are like certain pieces of us, it's still sacred. So this is my identification with her. So I actually wrapped it and I gave it to her with my meditation tool. I said there are sometimes people throw us as rags out. But come to find out there is little piece of us still in spite of the colossal bag and stuff. We hold sacred, you know. So that's what I, I could give it to her as presents. I gave her this uh, meditation tool called a lot of uh, prayer on one side and Kabbalistic uh, meditation on the other side, Saint Joseph's Jewish. I thought that would be healing for her. But in the kitchen table said wisdom, she was talking about how one does her kegels um, stabbed on the back. And she says, when you feel you are stabbed on the back, grow yourself so big until it becomes a thorn on the back. Right? So what I'm saying is for, for you and me, like, you know, because there is a reason you're doing this to me, because I also need to and she'll wear it out. Because all of us are a reflection of the same. I'm a mirror, I'm your mirror, you're my mirror. So what you're saying is I'm going through it in another way. And the reason I went through that is so that I could tell exactly what happened to me today, right? Like sometimes I feel does it make sense? Why was in spite of me doing everything right, I'm being hit in this. But I always feel I am an answer to somebody who's going to be in my future, right? So you are doing this because you're going to be an answer to somebody who's right. going to come your way. So so always think of it as what exactly shifted in you. And um, there is another book I'm going to read. I don't know how many books you can read in one week. <laughs> the other book is by Stephen Covey called Eight, see, he has seven habits of highly effective people. Have you read that book? No. So he says there are seven habits people who are very, very successful in life develop. But he came out with the next book called Eighth Habit. Eighth Habit is living like a legacy and be a legend and leave legacy. So that's what became my positive anonymous 12 step program. So my legacy after that is. Only four things I created because you always say you need to live by your actions. Actions are your only profession to what makes you act. Okay, you need to understand where the action is. The action is based on what value, what you hold true. This is the way we have to grow. Values are what you esteem, what you give worth to. Values determine where you spend time, energy, money. Value influences your daily choices. What's most important to you? What's most important to you is your family, your daughter. So what I did was my mission statement is resoluteness. My goal is to stabilize family because I was exactly like your priest. My value is 12 step because when it happened the next day, I bawled my eyes out. I went to the Hindu temple. I said, hey, guys, I said, I'm thrown out of my home. Can I come to you? They said, oh, because of insurance, I cannot let you in. I went to the church, they said, you need to do rosaries and nines a month. And after which you get baptized, we'll think about it. By the time my kids would be gone, right? So I went to the nearest Alanon. My kids were crawling on the floor. I bawled my eyes. And okay, the, girl, the girl put like her number down on the back. Her name is Jean. She said, honey, call me. I'll come and pick you up. And you know what? I feel I don't need religion. I don't need anybody who is bogus. I cut out all my husband's friends from my life that minute so because I am going to build in. If you are divorced, whoever stays with me is my my gang. Many of my husband's friends told me, you're crazy. You need to go see therapist. That's why your husband called the police on you. I said, thank you. I said, let me be crazy and happy. 
And from that moment, I began to be creative. And I said, my project is spiritual in a way. Because actually that month I was praying, and there were a lot of higher beings that came. I was player one. The minute I called, God comes to me. God answers me. You know who doesn't answer me? Just human beings. <laughs> God came and told me. That makes sense. So God said, you know what? I'm going to walk by you. So I, 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 there were higher beings that said, we'll be here for you. We'll take our own. I said, I'm so afraid. So then uh, they said, okay, we'll leave you alone. And then my son said, mom, I'm scared. So I have to hold his hand, even though I wanted to put my blankie on him. So then I said to the higher beings, I said, I will be there. Because I know I need to be there for you today. Because that's what I did in 2001. So I looked at and I said affirmation of faith. Because when I went to Brigham and I was a fellow in Brigham and Women's. So the minute I told them about the police incident, my boss, his name is Frankie Willis, he's the head of the department now. Radiology, he says, no, you have to go to the next department. I'm not ready. I'm not allowing you to continue a fellowship until you finish your medical training. So I learned a lot of worldly rules too, because being so spiritual is not enough in this world. So I wrote this thing called Affirmation of Faith. When I looked down at your baby, I felt very stuck and want to hold my hand because you're scared. I was scared too. I in in instantly reached out and take your hand. With faith, I lift up my hand to hand me divine help. As we affirm breathing, we are healed. Okay, and that when I went to my work, I was so thrilled. This is my uh, hostel work I was doing in addition. I was in my fellowship. Fellowship was very supportive. You know what they did? My hospital medical director took away my computer because he's so scared. I'm wasting uh, his time writing poems. So I lost my computer privilege. Wow. The world treats you differently. Remember that. So I understood people are all, always what they fear. And so I said, give me a behavior plan. I said, just like children are being taken away. I said, give me a behavior plan so I can get back my computer. And you know what he said? If you talk, and I, I was pregnant then. He knew I needed a job. He says, if you talk one more word, I will fire you. So that was, I am grateful because I prayed to him. Wow. One hundred percent. So walk the walk with me. Every week we'll make progress. It's going to be good through our time. And we're going to gain that trust. How we gain that trust for spiritual is grow the Buddha in you. Okay? So growing time. Let go of what needs to go. Grow what you need to go. Okay? Grow. Sorry. Grow what needs to go. This is the way I'm going to title it in YouTube. We're going to do every week progress for 90 days. Because I don't want for this to be the reason we said. I'm going to stand by you. So anything you feel pressure, remember that. Okay? And you promise to yourself and me, then I'm going to use this as an excuse to use. Thank God. Thank you.